Hi everyone, I'm Russ. I'm uh, Mark. And this is a Spirited Endeavor. Priming the Pump Edition. Yes. So. 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 <laughs> so tonight, well, you know, um, we've, it's not like we've been avoiding Johnny Walker. Yeah. You know, we've, you know, we've, we've, we've experienced it in our own lives, just mm -hmm. kind of going out to restaurants, whatever. It's a, it's something that's very accessible, something that has a lot of, uh, following and yeah. um, it's generally something that we've kind of I don't want to say shied away from but we haven't really di dived deep into it yeah and I think you hit on something there the fact that it's so familiar and the fact that it is so accessible perhaps is one of the reasons why it just has we haven't I haven't been in a hurry to get to it uh, to explore the line just because I am f somewhat familiar with it now, uh, we recently did a uh, Priming the Pump episode where we put the Johnny Walker Black up against the uh, the, um, the Smoky Grouse. Yes. And man, that was surprising. Yeah, it really was actually. Uh, the side-by-side -side comparison went a little differently than I expected. Yeah, a whole new appreciation for the Black. Agreed. All right, so we, uh, so we bought this um, uh, pack and it had four different kind of four different Johnny Walkers in there. There was the black, there was the gold uh, reserve, there was the 18 year, and the blue. Yes. Now, um, I'm I'm kind of unsold about buying a $250 bottle of yeah. of of whiskey, you know, especially when you know I'm in the you know when I'm in the store and everything. And if I have that to, to spend on a whiskey, I'm probably going to end up with an Octomore. Agreed. That being said. We had the opportunity to get, you know, a, a smaller bottle of this. I think yeah. that's uh, what a two two hundred milliliter bottle, and uh, we took it. And here we are. We're gonna try it. Yeah, I am genuinely curious. I am too. Again, having sampled some of their others, I'm very curious to see what they've done here. Yeah, for sure. Now, Johnny Walker Blue has a um, a distinguished following. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, it is a very well regarded whiskey. Yeah, and. Um, and we're we're this is this is our chance to get into it and yeah. de decide ourselves if we want to buy that two hundred and fifty dollar bottle. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe we're gonna find out. I don't know. We're gonna find out. <laughs> All right. So let's get into it. So this is a blended Scotch, meaning there is some grain in there along with some single malt. I imagine for sure. And now it, uh, it's some of their they they say it's some of their rarest whiskeys. Yeah. And uh, some of these have some age. They don't name names. They don't name they names. They do on, this. on some of their other bottles, but they don't name names with this one. Oh, actually, oh. that's pretty good. Uh, nice little cork on that. A little cork on that one. Interesting. All right. Actually, it's a nice color to it. It really does. Hey, buddy. Our whiskey mooch for the day. Say hi. Our, uh, <laughs> our production assistants, ladies That's right. and gentlemen. Yeah, he's the one that edits, edits all the videos. Just in case you have any complaints, this is where they're going. <laughs> His name is Kanadi. All right, okay. so. Um, wow. That is thick. Yeah, that is a very thick whiskey. And that's a 40%. 40%. But yeah. it, but it, um, it has a viscosity of something that's a little, you know, Something with a little higher proof. Agreed. Yeah. And beautiful oils on that, too. I'm noticing that as well. More than I would have expected. Yeah. Interesting. That's a... Uh, I mean, that's cat fur on a on a, <laughs> on a velvet coat. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a little cling there. There's a little cling. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Oh, the nose is kind of interesting it on really that is. one. More going on there than I expected, actually. Yeah, so uh, fruity. Um, I'm it getting, is fruity. I'm getting apple. I'm getting like a perfumey note on that. Agreed. Um, there's no harsh edges. Not a, not mm -hmm. any. I'm not getting any smoke on that. No. It just kind of rolls. Yeah. I get uh, like a little. I hesitate to say it. Corn note like what you would get out of a really corn forward whiskey yeah, um, a, just just a little bit and then the the floral and the fruit note especially yeah yeah that's a that's sweet it's it's sweet on the nose yeah i'm not getting a lot of malt no but i but i think that uh 
that perfumey note is probably it. Mm. So, um, yeah, it, it does have you know like a uh, like a like a fresh cut hay or, or fresh cut grass. Grass, yes. Grass, more yeah, more grass than hay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, more on the nose than I expected. Yeah. Very cool. Right. Well, shall we? Slancha. Cheers. That is very unique. A little cough just uh, put a whole new level le level of caramel in that. Yeah, I agree. Wow. Getting that, that on the exhale myself. Mm. All right. So, um, so initially on the tongue, it was it, it's it's sweet, uh, like sugary, um, rather than like caramelly. Mm. Um, it's like sh like a like a brittle sugar, like you'd get on like a creme brulee. Um, then, and then I get a little bit, just the just the barest mm. hint of barrel spice on it. Wow. Um, just nice warmth, not a not anything with sharp edges or anything on that. Mm. And then it's just vanilla and caramel mm -hmm. and buttered biscuit and. Um, I. Got to admit, I kind of dig it. I definitely dig it. Wait till you go back for the second taste on that one because it really comes alive at that point. All right. Um, so first, Mission accepted. First sip for me, um, got a little bit of heat on the back end. Mm -hmm. Didn't really get anything on the palate. No alcohol to speak of. No real barrel spice to speak of. Mm. Nice sweetness, especially on that second sip. The sweetness really kicks in. And there's yeah. almost like... Um, a homemade whipped cream kind of aspect oh, to yeah. it uh, right about mid palate for me the finish isn't the strongest thing i will say that um, i do the vanilla does continue uh, but it's not it's not intense but no. man it is it's i really like the fruit note i really like that uh, the vanilla and the whipped cream kind of thing going on there that's a pleasant whiskey. It is a very pleasant whiskey. Wow. Now it is a little tannic for me on the mm. back end. Um, oh, wow. But you know, I I see where you're coming from with that whipped cream note. So it's got like a, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of buttered mm. biscuit, a little bit of shortbread cookie. Now I go back to the nose. I will say after the second sip, that's where it's at. You get yeah. more on the second sip, and I'm noticing on the nose, I'm getting a little bit more. There's a little more clarity to the fruit note for me. Um, yeah, and now I'm getting a little bit of that malty aspect. Now. Yeah, and I think you needed to taste it in order to, to to kind of tease that out. Yeah, just to get acclimated mm. to it and get past the. I mean, if this is our first sip for the night, so of course the first sip is always going to be a little bit different as your palate has to acclimate. But that second sip, wow, wow. Um, fruit notes for me. Um, I'm getting a little bit of apple. I think um, sour apple, perhaps. Yeah, a little um, green apple. Yep. Yeah, maybe. Uh, um, I don't know if sour apple is the right term, but it's that, that crisp kind of... Yeah. Hmm. I'm getting a little apricot in there. Hmm. Interesting. I think uh, one of my neighbors blew up their meth lab. Yeah. Huh. All right. That or somebody still went up into space. <laughs> Around here, you never know. You never know. This is surprisingly pleasant. Yeah, no, I'm really, really digging this whiskey. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wow. I like that sweetness. I do like the sweetness. Um, I'm going to really enjoy drinking more of that. I would agree. I guess the question, however, would you buy the full bottle? Ooh. At the current asking price, is it worth that? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm because, with you on that one. Because if if I look up to even lower price points than that, you've got the Deanston mm -hmm. 18. Um, you've got some really. You've got some, whiskeys. yeah. Of course, the the Octomore and everything. But I mean, even even if you're looking for sweeter whiskeys, the Deanston is mm -hmm. probably would probably be my go-to for that. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm looking for something not sherry cast, I would I might go the Glenmo 18. Agreed. Yeah. While I really enjoy this, and it's rather impressive for what it is i don't think i'm willing to pay what they're asking for a bottle um again though so far off from what i've had with the red or the black i know it's a very different whiskey than yeah. those and you could tell that there there is a level there there is a there is a distinct level in this whiskey yeah. that the black doesn't have that the red doesn't have oh yeah 
Um, we're gonna we're gonna try some others here. We've mm -hmm. got the we've got the green and we've got um, some others. Yeah. Well, this is gonna be a bit of a series, much like we did with the Kilhoman. Yeah. Um, wow, that's really tasty. All right. Now, I guess the question I have is, when we go to do the rating, do we take price and is do we consider the price, or do we just go based on taste? I think we can go based on taste. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's the only f fairness. Now, I mean, we're, you know, we're probably coming in a little bit biased and everything because we understand the the cost of this one. Yeah. But uh, but I mean, just going on taste alone, mm -hmm. I'm I'm ranking this one pretty high. Me too. Um, now I've got to say, we've had Compass Box, which makes some fantastic blends, and that to me is kind of the benchmark as far as blended whiskey is concerned. Hedonism. Or blended Scotch, absolutely. Hedonism. Um, so bear that in mind when I when we start throwing these numbers out. We've both had some really fantastic blends. Um, for me, I'm going to put this at a four. I'm putting it at a four. Now, considering where Compass Box ended up, that's a damn good number. Yeah, it really is. Um, and again, not taking price into consideration. If I was, that might adjust it some, but just strictly based off of taste and what they've put in this bottle, yeah, for me, it's a solid four. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I wow. think I think given the given the money, I would probably lean more toward Compass Box. Agreed. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, for a blend, you know, if you're looking for something blended and, mm -hmm. and just artistic and amazing. Well, yeah, you can get Compass Box a bit cheaper than what you would find this, is my understanding, at least some of them. Yes, they've got a couple out there now, the, the no names, mm -hmm. and uh, they're, you know, they're pretty they're pretty solid whiskeys. I'm yeah. trying to try to get out my hands on one. They're kind of hard to mm -hmm. find right at the at this point. But um you know, I'm really curious to see what they what they put in those bottles. But yeah. if, certainly, if we're going the hedonism or the Spaniard, oh, or yeah. uh, um, you know, we're you know we're dealing with some really solid stuff there. Yeah, no doubt. Thoroughly impressed, though. Again, oh, like way this. outside of what I was expecting from them. Um, very impressed. I can see where this has a following. Oh, absolutely, yeah. certainly. Wow. Well. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I hope you had a good time, and I hope you tune in for the rest of these. Yeah, uh, yeah, we sure did. We had a great time with this, so uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye.